Agent Carter episode for the Blitzkrieg button. I was definitely excited for this episode, seeing that Howard Stark was going to be coming back into it. And not only that, but we in the preview, they really um, focused on the fact that there was going to be an argument between Peggy and Howard. And I had no idea what it was, of course. With it being a preview, they made it seem like that was going to be the entire episode that... Stark was doing something that was really, really horrible or something like that. And it really had me curious. I mean, of course, I love the show anyway, so I was I was interested in watching. But I really wondered, what is it that he did that was so bad? And we find out in this episode is that he lied to her, basically. And it was really simple. He could have easily just said, you know, there's a vial of Steve's blood. He would have had to explain it, and I'm sure he... Well, really, if, he, if it wasn't for Jarvis, he could have easily just you know, gone with the plan and it would have been fine. But she got upset by that. You know, it's Steve's blood and he hid that from her. And not only that, but it seems like with him being, you know, Howard Stark, it's just like he would use all these great things and really just do it because he's making money, not because, you know, curing something as simple as the common cold would, you know, change the world. So it was a really cool you know, interaction between the characters. It was a great scene, even though it wasn't really the big focus. I mean, most of it was focused on, like, a bunch of other stuff compared to that, you know, specific little scene. But it was really interesting. It was a good scene. I enjoyed the fact that, you know, for one, Peggy, like, just socked, you know, socked Stark straight in the face, and then it was like, boom, commercial. And I thought that was pretty cool. It was just like, she was mad that he lied. And... You know, it could have been avoided. He would have, like I said, he would have had to explain why he had the blood and all this stuff, which he had to do anyway. But it would have been much easier. And it, you know, he says why he didn't do it. And it was because he wanted to not make her upset or anything like that. But she'd be able to handle that. It, it was, is, of course, kind of a crappy thing to remind someone of the person that they really kind of fell in love with and then who, like, crashed into the ocean and was lost forever in a frozen tundra but you kind of have to trust that a person's strong enough I mean it's not like she was just gonna break down and collapse like yeah this is Steve's blood as if everyone doesn't talk about Captain America still even after he died they still have like the radio show which was in I believe the you know first and second episode so it's not like she doesn't hear Captain America being tossed around all the freaking time so, you know, it, he really made that way worse than it needed to be, but I definitely enjoyed it. And it was cool because in the very beginning of the episode, they show off, you know, Jarvis's little tail where he, like, tugs his ear. And initially, when he did that, I thought it was because Peggy was at the corner and he saw her. He was just trying not to look obvious, so he gave her, like, the sign tugging on his ear. And then, you know, we saw it later in the episode, and it's like, oh, he just has a very terrible tell when he's lying like that's just one of the most obvious things he's doing this and it was kind of interesting I, I enjoyed that also the little scene in the beginning was interesting um I think one of my favorite things in this episode though was like the weird end of the, ep end of the episode twist where this guy who seemed like he was the, the main villain the entire episode he has his people Mr. Mink he has his people go in and try to you know, blackmail Jarvis, try to get some extra money out of him. They get beat up. He kills the two guys who were left because they failed. He has, like, the cool little you know, automatic pistol, which really seemed more like a Gatling gun because he was just, like, those things were shooting through people like crazy. They didn't seem like they were just tiny little bullets. If anything, they seemed like it seemed like he was shooting nails more than anything because they were kind of just shooting straight through people. But I enjoyed that. I thought it was kind of cool. He was able to find Peggy. He, you know, climbed the building, went through the fence and all this extra crap. And he gets to the door, and I thought it was going to be some crazy confrontation. And I really thought we were going to get to see Howard actually fight this guy. And it would kind of be like, man, Howard actually has some sort of, you know, fighting capabilities. And then this guy just gets killed by, like, random super Spider-Woman spy next door. And she's, you know, jumping off the walls and junk. And just kills the guy, snaps his neck, takes his gun... And now she's going to be going after Peggy. I don't know who the heck she's working for. I would have to assume it's probably the main people. And I don't know if the, um, I can't even think, the typewriter may or may not be connected to her. It might kind of bring the cops or the SSR a little bit closer to Peggy kind of doing her own little investigation trying to help Howard out. But 
you know, this woman being next door, I don't know if she got there before or after, and that just, you know, happened to be where she was staying, and things kind of just worked out in her favor, where it's like, oh, this woman I've been searching for um, ends up moving next door. But I'm excited for the next episode, and I'm like a week behind, so fortunately I get to see that really soon. But it was really cool. I, I thought that was a really interesting twist. I like the character Mr. Mink. I, he was one of those characters where he was the type of character who was really weird and he spoke in a really weird manner. It's just like, you know, I need this and you're like, no, I'll take care of it. Especially when he went to the colony he was delivering the flowers and the woman who was talking to me was just like, I love her. And that was it. There was no like, I'm going to try to act like I give a crap. It was just like, I love her. Like a real robot. And then he just took off. He saw the room number and he was gone. And I love those characters because they're so weird and I think that's why those type of villains pop up in TV shows a lot because it's like that person is just really weird. It's the manner in which they speak. And they're always super calm. And then that's when they're in like their angry mode, I guess. They're calm. And then when they're in a normal situation just trying to get you know info out of somebody, they almost seem weird and robotic because, you know, them being elevated to anger is pretty much calm for everybody else. So it, it, I always like those characters. They're very interesting. And then, you know, this guy just being killed off in the end, and he, and get it he gets his neck snapped. A bit of a twist for me, so I enjoyed that. We also got some pretty interesting character development in this episode, and specifically it was for Sousa. And I really loved that. I thought his character getting those moments was definitely really good. We got some pretty cool moments out of all the cops, I think, because we had the one guy whose name I can't remember. Uh, he gets promoted to chief temporarily, and he kind of you know, takes over and he's like real stern and it's like, you know, we're agents, the most important thing about this guy's name is that it started with agent, so remember you guys are agents, you know, single file line and all this extra crap, and we see how he acts and stuff, and then we even had the scene with him and Peggy, and he mentions how, he really just talks about how society is the way that it is, and he kind of mentions the fact that it sucks that that's the way it is, it's really sad that society is that way, but that's just how it is. And I thought that was a pretty interesting scene for his character. And also, seeing his style versus Sosa's style. And how Sosa, when he came back, he kind of had the applause and stuff. And he realized it was because he got injured, not because he really did something for his country. And, you know, even the guy, the homeless guy, was like, you know, just three different people who all kind of went through the same thing. They, you know, fought for the country, they're veterans. And it was just really interesting to see the different styles and how these three people went through the same thing and they all came back very different people. One guy was homeless and it's like he had extra crap that sucked when he got back home with his wife cheating and losing his job. Then you have like Sousa who was injured and it's like he wanted to be thanked but not because he was injured or because other people felt guilty for feeling fine but just because he did his job. He did what was to be done. And then we had like the third guy where... In this episode, we get the reference that he did so much crazy stuff that he got, like, medals and awards and all this extra stuff. And for him, it's like, I just did what I needed to do. So I, I'd love to get some information on that. Although, if they kind of do a season two for the show, which I believe they probably will. I think they said they want to. I don't know if it's been um, officially greenlit yet. But if we get a season two or something like that, I'd love to get some backstory on him and just all of the extra stuff that he did but I thought that was cool and even the chief when he went to um Germany or he went to Russia he went to one of those places they said Germany and Russia and Germans and Russians a lot in this episode so I don't remember exactly where he went but I know he spoke to a German and I enjoyed that I liked his tactics where it's like you know this is cyanide you give me the answers I'll let you die a quick death and then it's just like the next scene is like oh hey what a breath man you know this little pocket or not pocket but um little watch breath mints so I enjoyed that. It was a nice, funny little scene. I thought that was actually really cool of him to do it that way. And it was just a good episode. We got to see Howard come back in, kind of doing his thing, being silly with, like, you know, and promiscuous with the woman in the um, in the building. We also got to see Stan Lee with his little cameo, which I knew he was going to have one. And I thought that was kind of funny. I didn't think anything of it either. I was like, they're just going to have this guy here. He's just going to get up and it's going to be mostly funny because it's like he's not going to recognize that it's Howard Stark. And then it's like, oh, it's Stan Lee, so that made it even cooler. 
Um, I know some people are probably tired of Stanley making the cameos. I personally always love it. I always think it's kind of funny when he's in the little cameos. And it made me think of um, him actually being in the Captain America movie. It's like, oh, he's there, and it's like he's like a twin of the other person. All this stupid stuff that doesn't even make sense. But I enjoyed the episode. I thought it was really cool. I'm very excited to see how things play out with this new spy woman. I don't know what she is. I mean, I don't know if she's one of the big villains or, you know, working for them. I don't know what her deal is. But I'm excited to see how things play out with her character and what Peggy, how Peggy finds out that she's a bad guy and all this extra stuff. And also, um, in the next episode, the Howling Commandos are coming back and it's going to be like a cool action-based episode. And we'll get to see Peggy just going out, leading the team. And it, I doubt it, but it may or may not tie into the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode we saw where Peggy went and they found uh, the obelisk. And that may or may not, you know, like I said, that might be in the next episode. Most likely it won't be. It would be cool if they did that and they actually had that scene and we got to see the main mission. But if I remember right, in that episode, the mission went by like that. Like, they went in, they shot a couple of people, and it was like, all right, you know, we you know, solved all the issues. But I'm excited for that episode. But, of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this one. So, please, comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And even though I'm, like, a week behind with this, so there's really no point in asking the question... What do you guys think is going to happen with this secret agent? Like, what is her mission? You know, who exactly is she working for? And just how are things going to play? Like, how bad is it going to get for Becky? Or really, how easy do you think it might be? Because I'm sure things are going to work out. She's Obviously, she's going to survive. If you saw the Captain America movie, she was in that. Sorry if that's a huge spoiler. It It's really not, because she's not really in the film. She's in it for, like, five minutes, if that. But... You know, we all know she's going to live. They aren't going to have, like, an eight-episode series and she dies in four. Or, you know, dies in five. So, you know, there's not too much mystery there. It's really just the journey and how crazy things get before she's able to get out of it. But, like I said, I want to know what you guys think. So, please, comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.